Donald Trump survives an assassination attempt. The German government sells $2 billion worth of Bitcoin. And Larry Fink confesses that he's been wrong about Bitcoin and blockchain for the past five years. Who would have guessed? And we released some interesting results from a study that we've done into the hedge fund industry. How big is it? How it's engaged? It's a very important part of the investment topography of this space. Hope you enjoy. Join us on Beyond Bitcoin. Good morning and welcome to another episode of Beyond Bitcoin. My name is Derek Graham. I'm the CEO of Portal Asset Management. And with me today is Mark Witten, the CIO of Portal Asset Management. Hey, Mark. Hey, Derek. How are you doing? Well, extraordinary political turmoil in the last 30 days, certainly just the last 10 days. And of course, we've seen real changes in the flow of Bitcoin sales with the German government selling nearly $2 billion of, of Bitcoin. So much is happening. How about giving us a bit of a view of what you think is happening and what's coming in that Bitcoin area at the moment and the general market? Thanks, Rick. Yeah, I think, look, the German government, it was well flagged that they were going to be dropping 50,000 Bitcoin quite rapidly into the market. They, they didn't execute very well driving the price down all the way to, I think, 53,000 before we saw a 20% bounce. What we have seen, though, in the past week to 10 days is inflows into those ETFs of around $2 billion. This is the, the largest amount of inflows we've seen probably since the beginning of the year. I think it's taken inflows for the year to around almost 18, nearly $19 billion, which is double what you saw in, in, in the 2021 inflows into the market itself. I think what's also been interesting is that Mt. Gox has, has flagged that they've been moving or have moved, call it 140,000 Bitcoin, which is about $9 mm. billion, dollars, to unknown cold wallets and to unknown addresses. And yet, I think Bitcoin has continued to rally despite all this. And there's, I think, two sort of reasons for that. One being that the, the actual economic data that's come in recently is suggesting hopefully a soft landing, although I'm not sure on that. That's the CPI and some of the retail numbers. What it is signaling is that the Fed should be cutting rates now. It should have already been doing it, but definitely we should see a, a cut in, in September. My personal feeling is the risk of recession is moderate. It's not high, but it's definitely there. The market's saying it's probably it's not as, as prevalent, might be a bit muted. The other thing was the, the failed assassination attempt of Trump, which seems to have pushed him further up in the polling and you know, improved his, his popularity. But one of the reasons for that being is that A, is pro crypto, but also pro keeping the tax cuts in place and, um, and focusing on getting businesses working again in the US. So I think that's, it's not just a rally in crypto, it's been a rally across equities as well as, and it's not just in tech specific equities, it's shifted into the second order. We're starting to see that um, in the crypto as well, we're seeing some of the altcoins starting to to pick up. So I think it's been a very choppy market. Our, our analysis led us to become quite bullish. Call it a few weeks back, we, we increased, we cut some of our shorts. We, we started increasing some of our long exposure. And we're, we're well positioned for this rally, which we believe will, barring another assassination attempt, that hopefully doesn't transpire, the market should push higher going into the, the end of this quarter and definitely into the end of the year. And so some of the comp confidence levels in regards to the regulations in America have also been boosted with, of course, mm. the SEC accepting applications for the Ethereum ETF some time back now, but also SEC dropping actions against some of its biggest legal actions. And what looks like overtly stepping away from attacking cryptocurrency. I wonder whether it's because 90 million uh, Americans own cryptocurrency, and they're mm. also working out this is not a good thing for votes. So between mm. both Trump's campaign and the, the Democrats' campaign, there's ease coming off crypto assets. Do you think that's playing a role too in some optimism going forward? Yeah, definitely. There's 
The rumor is that ETF, ETH ETFs will be completely approved and finalized within by Tuesday next week, middle of next week, which is very bullish. And then there's already Solana applications in that will then, if, if Bitcoin and ETH have been approved, like it'll just keep flowing through. And I think that it's the uptake in the space will start increasing. What we're seeing and what's bullish to me is you're seeing a return of the retail investor, which I think is, yeah. is important because that's been lacking. So you're getting this. What we would say, the, the, the I don't want to say if it's the final piece of the puzzle, but it definitely adds legitimization to what we've been saying, is that we're getting institutional adoption because of the regulatory clarity. So you've got the support of, of as you said, the SEC approving Ethereum and ETFs, and then you've got the EU by MICA, and, and you're looking at a lot of improvement in what's happening in both China, Australia, etc., Hong Kong. But then you've got the other side of it, which is all these massive fund managers, the biggest in the world, like BlackRock and Vanguard, State Street, Vanek. They're adding crypto to the universe of assets. And then that means that registered investment advisors, financial planners, these are small amounts of money, but collectively they're massive because now yes. you can wrap these in insurance products. You can allocate portions of spending. You can So it, it starts moving things at the margin because crypto, remember, is also particularly Bitcoin and Ethereum. It's deflationary. They're not, it's not like they're just pumping. It's not like there's dilution coming through all the time. It's anti-dilutionary. So we, once again, we have that rising demand and falling supply, I believe. That's going to play so, out in movement into those altcoins. Yeah. Exactly. So, Mark, we recently did a study on the hedge fund industry. For the listeners, yeah. Portal Digital Fund and Portal Asset Management have had funds under management for some four and a half years now. And we worked out that, in fact, the industry is so young that only about 7% of the hedge fund industries have had funds under management for longer than four years. But some mm. of the aspects of the hedge fund industry, which plays a real role in investment into the space, is probably worth sharing. What did we learn from that? There's some interesting numbers and, and stats that we looked at. As you said, that most funds, there's only a, a small amount of funds, like 7% that are a track record greater than, than four years. There's also been this, you know, the survivorship bias in that a lot of funds closed or consolidated. And, not, and it goes through these waves of a lot of funds applying and then some of them die off and then it started up again. So we've seen a lot of new funds come to market. And I think part of that is also because the industry has evolved quite a bit over the past call it five to seven years since we've been involved was all looking at managing funds. Initially, the funds we were talking to all were technical and momentum based trading funds. And that was prior to 2020. But then you saw some of these other ecosystems that started emerging like DeFi, NFT storage, Web3 applications, and how that was enabling consumer participation with gaming, entertainment, and Funds then step forward, having a lot more of a thematic and fundamental approach to managing money. So you now have a much broader range of funds with different timelines, saying some are going to be short-term trading and momentum and arbitrage. Others are looking at taking advantage of supporting some of these newer tokens that are coming through. But you're also getting a much better pedigree of, um, call it experienced financial services people, combining with tech. But then the other thing is you talk about hedge funds. Well, hedge funds... Hedge funds traditionally have been great ways to access the market because they, they tend to be pioneers and they take a lot of risk in terms of their business model. And yes. therefore, they're generally quite well rewarded when they get it right. But what's been happening, what we've seen is that this has been facilitated by you've got a lot of well-established traditional finance service business in terms of administration and custody and so on that are entering the market to support this growth because hedge funds can't operate properly without having proper operational robustness. So you've got the, the growth in the market and all the new tokens. You've got growth in hedge funds that are actually now able to attract capital from pension funds, endowments, insurance companies, banks, and obviously wholesale yes. investors. And then you've got proper administration on the other side to ensure that the operational risk is managed. So you're now getting a proper build. There's a proper ecosystem being put in place that'll enable vast flows of capital into it outside of the ETFs. And I think that's that's been the, the evolution. And I think the hedge funds that have been around, as we have for quite a, going on five years, four years plus, are very well positioned to take advantage of this because A, we've got the track record, but B, we've also been part of this evolutionary process. We've also been part of the pioneering of this space. Yes. And that, that means we're well positioned for the next iteration. So we learned a couple of things also, and that is that just under 40% 
of all of the hedge funds that are in the crypto asset space have less than 10 million US dollars funds under management. So still very small. Yeah. The other thing we yeah. learned, of course, is that there's less than 1% of the total number of hedge funds in the world are crypto asset hedge funds. So still a tiny percentage of the hedge fund industry. Mm -hmm. And then we are seeing what we've often seen in, in this space, in, in the hedge fund world, and that is that 20 hedge funds hold about 70% of the total funds under management in mm -hmm. the hedge fund industry in crypto assets. Now, we may see that change over time, but what we're observing, and I think what's important for the audience to get, is that mm -hmm. they're seeing the evolution of the adoption of investment into this new asset class called crypto assets, but it's still terribly mm -hmm. early days. Still 1%, less than 1%, 0.97, they quote, of the total number of hedge funds, digital asset hedge funds. So a lot more to come, a lot more money to come in, as you say, when the regulations are getting put into place, governments are not becoming as aggressive as they have been for the last two years into this space to see it grow. What do you think that means for the main investors that have got pretty traditional assets of equities and real estate, bonds, that sort of thing? Do you see them benefiting at last from this or do you think this is going to be held by just the small percentage of the wealthy? No, I think retail participation will grow and I think wholesale participation in the form of ultra high net worth individuals and family offices. As, as I said, the space has become a lot more legitimized by the likes of the most reputable institutions in terms of operational due diligence. We've mentioned them, BlackRock and so on. So I think once this filters through to the, what you would call pension fund consultants, as well as the independent financial advisors and financial planners, wealth managers, as they call themselves as well, it's an easier, it's a much easier sell to say you hold X in gold or commodities, that there should be some sort of allocation to the space. And that's even easier to sell when the market is, is rallying. Like I still believe we're really at the beginning. The bull market hasn't really begun to get going yet. We've had some, I think, not false starts, but we've had a few issues along the way in this, the past six months that have given it a bit of a push and then there's been a bit of a pullback. But as we've said earlier, we, we haven't really seen the network effect kick in just yet. And I, I keep saying this is not a, a cyclical bull market driven by interest rates and growth in the ecosystem and some VC coming to fruition and maturing and some exit. Like this is a secular bull market. The other thing, going back to just the political side of it, is the US has shot itself in the foot with ejecting the likes of Russia from SWIFT. And it's created this demand for alternative ways of, of looking at, at transacting and financing. Companies will increasingly turn away from traditional listing towards tokenization and issuing yes. tokens to, to fund their businesses. Like that, that's going to happen. So yes. when you look at the participation from retail investors, from people that are looking for a way to generate wealth for themselves, like are young people going to be able to afford buying properties and renting them out? It's very difficult. But can they afford a thousand bucks a month into the crypto space? Definitely. And that's easy to do on their wallets. And they. So I think that's where the network effect is being underestimated. I don't think that we've even really reached the tipping point yet because the institutions weren't no. part of that equation a year ago and now not only are they part of that equation they're actually driving it so that's why it's a secular bull market and we're starting to pivot the fed has no choice but to cut they have to they should have done it. i don't know what they i can't understand why they haven't done it i'm still behind the curve is an understatement but maybe they'll catch up quickly short term long term again with regards to that and we talk about the fact that the adoption rate is continuing. There's north of half a billion wallets, crypto wallets now in existence. Mm -hmm. And there's also people who are skeptically saying, hey, some of these people are buying meme coins. Heaven forbid, I've personally got a few meme coins. They're pure speculation, but it brings people into the crypto asset environment. Mm -hmm. And what's intriguing mm -hmm. also is there's now a lot of talk in traditional worlds of the tokenization of real world assets. And it's been going for a year and a half now, very solidly, mm. the conferences that we've been to focus on tokenization of real world assets. Real world assets are worth between 400 and 500 trillion dollars. And those are assets relating to investments that have a return on investment or capital gain growth. What happens when you start tokenizing 400 trillion dollars worth of assets? 
Once they're tokenized, you can put them into wallets. Once they're in wallets, you can borrow against them. Will you go to the bank to borrow against them or will you use DeFi to borrow against them? Once they're in, the ecosystem grows. So I think the new generation that's coming is going to drive it by its urge to see new technology and returns. Traditional generation that exists, me, are tokenizing real world assets and that in turn is going to drive decentralized finance. Anyway, I think we're both violently in agreement that the, that marketplace is growing and mm. we're also seeing the hedge fund industry grow. And one of its greatest detractors, of course, was Larry Fink, who recently confessed his view may not have been correct a few years ago. What did he say around that, Mark? It was when Jim Cramer, Jim Cramer interviewed him and we tend to generally review Jim Cramer as a good counter counter. He tends to position us, whatever his view is, we tend to try and position ourselves in the opposite. Yeah, so yeah. that was... In, in the inverse Jim Craner. Yeah, the inverse Jim Craners. But he is a good contraindicator. He has been. Yeah. But I think what was interesting to hear is what Larry Fink said was he had been very skeptical and wasn't a um, proponent. But after he understood it, he said, look, he's, he was wrong for five years, which is quite a big statement to make to say I was wrong for that yes. long. But he yes. now believes in it. And he said it's a legitimate instrument. It has, and it does allow you to have uncorrelated type of returns, which is what you want. You want a small amount of crypto in your portfolio that gives you, you know, uncorrelated returns. And the other thing that he did say, which was, I think, very important because it's, it's something that is going to continue driving this market is countries continue to debase their currencies, particularly the US. Yes. The spending is, is continued to rise. And now they're paying over a trillion, I think, in like debt in you know, payments, hopefully rates come down. But I do think that, you know, if you believe that it, it is this digital gold as he does, that it gives you a way to control an inflationary hedge. It, it is like a way to preserve your wealth and it, it should be part of any portfolio. And this is, this is his view, which is great. And his view is now being echoed by many of the other sort of captains of these financial services firms from Goldman to JP Morgan. So I think what I was getting at earlier is that the infrastructure has been put in place and the people that are, would, you must remember, they can block it very quickly. They can say to their financial advisors, wealth managers, traders, you're not allowed to touch this. Compliance says no, and that's it, it's done. That was the view five years ago, three years ago, even yes. two years ago. Now the view is, listen, we like it. We think you should put your clients into it. So now there'll be a plethora of products that come out. It'll be, we saw recently, there's a presentation, people that are putting together American depository receipts on Bitcoin. Yes. So that equity yes. funds can participate that they can't hold crypto. So like... That's, and that will drive demand because those ADRs are going to be forced to actually buy the underlying physical. So the, the applications, like I said, are still endless. People haven't really figured out what the next YouTube and the gaming business is, just as they hadn't figured this out back in 2000. Where are we going to be five years from now? Particularly once it starts combining with the power that, that AI brings. Um, yeah, I, th I think this is still going to be the biggest wealth generation opportunity of our sort of our generation, should we say. Yeah. Look, 100% agree. And obviously I would because you and I are in sync in this particular view. But I also think that it's very important to consider that there's transition technologies occurring. For the cynic that, that has a wallet, that has a Bitcoin in it or part thereof or a fraction or a Santoshi in it, he's going to be going and he's probably why do you have ETFs for crying out loud? Why do you have an ETF and a highly tradable um, token? Why are you having ADRs buying into highly liquid tradable tokens that work? The answer is transitional technology. It just takes a while to move from inherent systems to new systems, and that includes transitional technology. And regulations force transitional technology to be able to go into place. But... I think all of us should greet that with open arms because what it means is simply more investors. And as the generation arrives and they take control of their wallets, which are bearer asset wallets, they own those assets and control them, then you, you may well see ETFs becoming less of a major play. But that could be 10 or 15 years away. Mark, any view on the next 30 days? I'm not sure anyone predicted the last 30 days. Yeah, I think we, we're going to start seeing... I, I do get the feeling... We're going to see increased, there's going to be a lot more talk around the political sphere. Yeah. That, that seems to be happening here in Europe as well as the US. So I think there's going to be quite a lot of noise. And it's important when managing money to look through the noise and to understand, is it a short-term 
is it like no, like the German government dumping 50,000 Bitcoin? That's like a once-off. It's a short-term thing. It's irrelevant. Mm. In fact, it's a great buying opportunity, which we used. Mm. Or is it a change in the outlook? Is it a change in the regulatory outlook? That's what we have to try and look through the noise and look through the, call it the emotion that's, that's generally generated by media to say, what, what, what is the real underlying state of the market? And we have had a mentality now for the past almost a year. In fact, it is a year of buying the dip. It never gave us a lot of opportunity until March, April, and then again in June. But we believe that we're at the start of this, not even close to, to, to being halfway through. And I think in terms of the next 30 days, it'll be interesting to see how it starts playing out. Um, I think the political sphere is starting to take shape because we're getting closer to the end of the year quite quickly. So mm. that is going to be a driver um, in terms of, of, how, of the outlook for crypto. But I also think a, a big catalyst is going to be when we actually see the Fed kind of if someone throws a, a bit of cold water over them and says, you need to start moving. Why have you waited so long? And when that happens, when you start seeing confirmation of the rate cuts, and I'm hoping it'll be 50 bips instead of 25 by the end of October, I think then you'll start seeing this ease in liquidity. And that I think the markets always move ahead of that. And that could be part of what we're seeing. But I, I do believe that we're in for a, a lot of excess liquidity that's been put into fixed income over the past Call it three years as rates have been this high, we'll start shifting back into to, to risk assets, long duration risk assets. And crypto is well positioned for that. Mark, thank you enormously for the time. And again, everybody that's listening to this, you can contact Mark at portal.am, simple as that. Contact us at any time, of course. And Mark will be on again in a month's time to give another market update on what's happening. And no doubt there'll be plenty happening over the next month. Thanks very much, Mark. Pleasure. Thanks, Derek. Chat soon.